Welcome to this Team Developer 6.2 overview video. I'm going to show you how you can save the state of a grid window and how to apply the saved state to a grid window. I'm going to show you what the enhancements to the tree control are in TD 6.2. I'm going to show you the date time pick enhancements in TD 6.2 and I'm going to show you how you can enable a MDI background gradient or an MDI background brush. With TD 6.2 <clears throat> you can save the state of a grid window into an XML file and then later apply that state file to uh, the same grid window again. For example, to save the user setting um, settings that he has defined like grouping, sorting, um, let me show you how that looks. So here is a grid window and in that grid window I can now sort by column by clicking in the header. You see that little um, arrow here, up or down. Um, I can also open the group by box and then group by um, columns, for example by country um, and zip and then sort by certain uh, sort by city for for example. Now <clears throat> let's say I'm a user of this application and I like this view to work with my data and now I can save that grid state here and now the grid state is saved to a file. Now let's just close this and run it again when it opens without the settings then you see it's back in uh, default mode but when I restore the grid settings then I get exactly the grouping and sorting that I had applied to my grid window. So you can display a superior um, usability uh, experience to your users with saving and loading the grid state. Now let's have a look at the source code of this. It's actually rather simple. <clears throat> when this um, window gets loaded, then it connects to the database, loads the grid with a call to SAL table populate and the things that are interesting for us in this case are the push buttons in the toolbar that do save the grid state, this one here. And the function for that is really easy, sal grid write state, the name of the grid control and then an XML file um, where it will save um, the settings too. Let's have a look at my file system here and you see that file has been created and if you look at it, it's a rather simple XML file that exactly describes the um, properties of each column in the grid control and tells um, TD if a column has been grouped by, the order of the group by, and the sort by and all these things and you can then in Team Developer use the other complementary function salt grid apply state to apply the settings from that previously saved grid state. And you can do that without the user having <clears throat> to do anything. You just save the latest state of a grid when he closes the application and then you can present the user when he starts the application again with the last status he had with the grid. The next things I want to show you are the enhancements to the tree control. You can see I have a window here with a tree control in it and the tree control is being initialized with several um, tree items on several levels actually. So the, at the bottom level you have the base colors and then you have um, the mixed colors like magenta or then even sub colors of the mixed colors which is light magenta, dark magenta. So I'm basically initializing the tree with several things here. And in TD6.1 we introduced um, the ability for a tree to not only contain the uh, titles, the visual titles of an, a tree item, but also to add an ID to every um, tree item, which is which allows you to search um, tree items not only by the title that is being displayed, which is this guy here, Sal Tree Find Item by Title, but you can also find a tree item by data, which is the intrinsic ID of a tree item. And what I do here with this pre-initialized tree when the application launches is this function that <clears throat> first counts how many tree items there are and then in a loop assigns the ID to a tree item, to each tree item there. And this is the function here, sal tree set item data. And I'm basically using the, um, the n loop number here um, as the 
primary index for the uh, key items in, in, in this um, tree. Now let's run this application and you see what I'm talking about. This is the uh, tree that is being defined in the outline with the magenta sub items here. And you can now do find a tree item by data. You could do that by find a tree item by, um, uh, by its display value, but also by data. So I want to find tree item number two with the index or the ID number two. And you see that's the green one. Basically, it's a zero based count here from yellow, blue, green is number two. Another new, nice new thing in the tree is the ability to move entire um, subtrees to a new tree parent item. So that is what this call does, and it moves the whole red um, tree branch as childs of the green branch here. And you see how easy that is, and that's just one function call. Let's see how that works in uh, Team Developer Programming. So we have those two buttons here, PB tree item, which um, basically takes as input the DF tree item value. That's where I enter the two and the function sal tree find item by data then selected the uh, right color item in the tree. And here sal tree set item checked basically sets the, um, the item that we found was find item by data to checked. And the other one PB moves up tree moves the um, subtree and you see here that I'm uh, in this case doing a sal tree find item by title. I'm looking for the red um, H item value and then for the green H item value and then I use the function sal tree move item to move the entire red subtree below the green um, tree item. Let's have a look at the enhancements to the date time picker. We have introduced four new properties for the date time pickers. That's week numbers, show none months days, show today and show none. All those properties have been available available in the date pickers before and are now available in the date time picker as well. So let's run this little demo application that shows each of these properties. <clears throat> I'm using a military date uh, time at the moment so that most people in the world understand the time format right now. Week number, if I open or if I drop down the months um, view here, you see that the week number is in front of, the, uh, of every week. Then if you have show non-months non days set to true, then um, the date time picker will display the non-months um, dates here uh, grayed out. If it's set to false, then you don't see the dates of the of, of not the current months. And show today. That's this button here. This allows you to quickly move to today. I'm using a German window, so that's why it's heute here. And here you see if it's set to false, then it doesn't show the uh, today button here. Show none. That's um, basically enables you to switch off any set preset dates, kind of reset button for the user. And if it's false, then it doesn't show this button here at the bottom. So let's have a quick look at attribute inspector here. You see all the <coughs> new properties are here. Show non, non months days, yes. Show today, yes. Show non equals yes and show week number equals yes here. So those are the four that you can use in any combination now with the um, date time picker. There is one more thing I'd like to show you with Team Developer 6.2 GUI features, and that is for MDIs. We now have the a new property that you can set for MDI windows so that the background um, has a themed color gradient, or you can also set the on .NET, you can set the background to a .NET brush or to a XAML brush. Um, let me first show you the themed MDI uh, background. Let's create a new MDI window here. And in Attribute Inspector, let's say themed background equals yes. Now let's run this application. 
And you see the background here is the themed background um, with a color gradient in it. So if you're not satisfied with that and you're um, working on .NET, then you can do something more advanced. And that's actually in Attribute Inspector for almost every object, you can set the background brush. And the background brush basically is a, a color gradient of some sort that you can define on your own in the outline. Let me quickly define a brush in the outline. Go to Global Declarations, Resources, and add a uh, brush here. Let's call this brush Rainbow. And below that you see it has some XAML that defines the brush. Now, just to be correct, to make this work, I need to switch this whole application to be in .NET mode. And now um, I can open the brush editor here and I can define um, a solid brush, a linear brush, a radial bar brush. Let me define a linear brush here and I can add several gradient stops here. So let's start with something like um, yellow with a little bit of orange. Then let's do a yellow that's more yellowish. Add, let's add another one with um, a yellow that's more greenish and another one so yellow that's even more greenish or a green that's a bit yellowish. I can change the gradient angle. That's how I want to have that displayed in my MDI background. Okay. And now the XAML of that brush is inserted here into the outline. And I can use the, the name here, Rainbow, to assign that to the MDI window. So if I select the MDI window, and go to background brush C. It even shows the brush name that I can use here, and that is Rainbow. I want to have be it Rainbow. Now let me compile this. Don't want to save it. And now it's compiling the uh, .NET application and running the .NET application. And the background window is not displaying what I wanted. See, I still have enabled the MD, uh, the background. Um, of the theme that overrides um, the brush. So if I set the background to not theme, to not be themed, and compile it again and run it again, then you see that the MDI background is the XAML brush that I have created before. So, and keep in mind, the XAML brushes are a quite powerful tool because you can apply those to any team developer control, really. So that was a quick overview on um, using background gradients in MDI windows. Thank you for watching the Team Developer 6.2 video on the grid, tree, date, time picker and more. Watch out for more in the coming days. Thank you and goodbye.